Second Chronicles 2020. Ah, very good, very good, very good. So they are loose in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa and stood uh, Tekoa and as they went out, Jehoshaphat and Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in uh -huh. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophet and you shall prosper. That is what I will deal with today. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall. Uh, yesterday, was it yesterday or when? Yes. Sometimes this week I've been, I've been hearing, I've been hearing uh, the lawyers talking about shall. I didn't. I don't know the, the the difference between shall and will, right? But they were saying shall. There is no compromise. Shall and here the Lord the word, the word of the Lord says. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of the core. I will not explain this. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, an inhabitant of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophet and you shall prosper. Number one, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Let me not deal with that. Let me not just deal with that. Already, we have believed in our God. And the Lord is establishing us. Like now, so we came to Kenyatta, we believed God and we came to Kenyatta. And so God is establishing us here. And, but, but, I'm using the word but, Jehoshaphat also told the people, and this is what I wanted to, to deal with, believe in his prophet and he shall prosper. 2024. 2024. The year of threshing the mountains. One of the things that will cause us to thresh the mountain is believing in the prophet and believing in his prophetic word. That will cause us to prosper in other words, we will be able to thresh everything that comes our way. I will, I will show you a number of examples as we continue because I do not have a lot of time. But I will show you a few examples where a prophet, where a prophet spoke a word. And when he spoke the word, and there was a mountain. There was a mountain before those people. Before the people. There was a mountain. But through the prophetic word, then prosperity came. In other words, the mountain was taken away. Hallelujah. The mountain went away. Hallelujah. If you read First Samuel, if you read First Samuel, chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, First Samuel of then, this is Eri. Eri was a priest. And uh, we know the story of Hannah and Penina. Or Penina. And here we see in verse 17, it says, Then Eri answered and said, Go in peace. That is the word of the prophet. He told, Eri told Hannah, Go in peace. And the God of Israel and and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. And verses 18. And she, she said, let your maid servant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and it and her face was no longer sad. Let's read verses 20. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked for him from the Lord. Hannah 
believed. Hallelujah. And what did she do in verses 18? Let's see verses 18. This is what she did. And she said, let your maid servant fight favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate. You remember, she was not eating. She was so sad. She was in the temple. She was praying. She was there. She was crying. She was barren. She was mocked. She was in distress. There was a mountain before her. She had nothing that she could have done. She had done all that she could have done. She had prayed. She had called upon the Lord. But nothing was coming forth. But when a prophet, a priest spoke a word. When the priest spoke a word in verse 17, and this is what the, the, the priest said in verse 17, then I early answered and said, go in peace. Just like, just like that. Hata kumwabia utapata mtoto. Apana? Alimwabia, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. Believe in the prophet and you shall be and you shall prosper. And you shall prosper. So anything that is causing you sleepless nights, believe in the word of the prophet. Just believe in the word of the prophet and you shall prosper. I give you another example. First Kings. Verse Kings 18 and verses 44. Then it came to pass the seventh time. You see? Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There is a crowd as small as a man's hand rise out of the sea. Rising out of the sea. So he said, Go up. Say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. This were words, these were these were words of the prophet, prophet of God, Elijah. And remember, the same same prophet is the one who had declared. If you read, if you read the beginning of this, this chapter, you discover he is the one who had declared. <laughs> Declared drought. Through my words, there will be no dew, no rain in the land. And there was no rain. When I see sana. If you read the uh, if you read First Kings chapter 17, beginning from verses 1. First Kings, so that you can see this. And right at the Tebisite, the, the Tisbite of the inhabitants of Gered, say to Ahab, the same, same man, the same, same king, as the Lord God of Israel live, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain this year, except by my words. Or by my word. Not words. He is the one who had declared a mountain. Why? Because the, the children of Israel had done what is evil before the Lord. They had abandoned to follow the commands, the law of the Lord. They had turned from doing what is righteous and they had turned to idols. Remember Ahab was the king at this time. And the wife of Ahab was called Jezebel. And Jezebel was one of the evil wives, evil people who lived at that time. And she is the one who um, actually he caused the people to begin to worship Baal. You remember, if when you read here, you discover before we get to chapter 18, you see that this man, Elijah, had summoned. He had summoned and he had said, 
bring all the prophets because he wanted to make sure, yes, I commanded the draw to come. I am the one to command the draw to go. So, I am the one, you are the one who has caused God to bring this, this famine. But I am the one who is going to cause this famine to go. In other words, I am saying, the Lord, the Lord will honor the words of the prophet. Praise the name of our Lord. Believe in his prophet. So shall you prosper. One as we son. I give you another example. If you read Second Kings, if you read Second Kings chapter two and verses, verses Second Kings chapter two verses ten. You see, you see this man called Elijah speaking. He is speaking to Elisha. So he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you not, it shall not be so. This is Elisha. This is Elijah speaking to Elisha. Elisha is speaking to Elijah. Elisha is speaking to Elisha. And then Elisha replied to Elijah replied to Elisha. Because the master, his master Elijah was to be taken away. And so he was told, when you see me go, when you see me when I am taken away, when you see me go, when you see me taken away, and you, it, it, shall, be, it shall be for you, but if you not see me taken away, it shall never happen. And it so happened that he saw Elijah being taken away and the double portion. Hallelujah. Because all that Elijah needed is the double portion. Tell your neighbor double portion. To bring prosperity. To bring prosperity. To bring prosperity. Prosperity to your buyer. Ai, se watu wa made demonize. Kwani kwani ukiprose wani vibaya. Eh? Lakini sasa wamefanya ijiri kwani ya prosperity gospel apana watu wa kuwe prospered. And one of the way to be prospered is to believe, is to believe the word of the prophet. Is to believe the prophet. Is to believe what the prophet says. And then when you believe what the prophet says, it shall be. So when when Elisha, if you read, when, when Elisha was, was being taken away, then Elisha saw. And when he saw, he received. After he received, he did many miracles. Let me go to Elisha. In 2 Kings chapter 4 and verses 3, because I do not have a lot of time. I, I think I have five minutes. Thirty minutes in a my friend. Eh? Then he said, "Look, look at, look at, look at, look at what the prophets." Saigine, saigine na biwa na biya kawatu mabo. Ana kuabiya una 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 mabiya. Ana kujana na kuabiya. Fasta na taka uniombe. Aya kujaja hapa ni kuombe. Baba katika china na Yesu. Balikiwa imetendeka. Father, in the name of Jesus. Uyu nabi, nabi aliambia uyu mama, fanya hivi, wewe uko na mlima. Mlima uko, ile iko hapa ni ya kuwa watoto wako, eh, watauzwa. Bwana asiye sana. Na unasema wako karibu kuuzwa. Na sasa wakiuzwa, eh, itakuwa aje. Sasa akamwambia prophet namna hiyo. Sasa yule mtumishi wako, yule mtumishi wako ambaye alikuwa moja wa watumishi wako watoto wake watauzwa kwa sababu ya nini kwa sababu ya deni mlima sema mlima 
ilikuwa kubwa ilikuwa kubwa zaidi alafu kwenda kwa nabii akamwambia hivi eda go borrow vessels from everywhere <laughs> kidi lakini yani anamwambia eda tu kaobe eda uobe tu just from all your neighbors empty vessels do not gather just a few and verses verses 4 it says and when you have come in you shall shut the door behind you and your son then pour it into all those vessels set aside the full ones the full ones so he went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who were brought the vessels to her and she poured it and then now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she she said to her son bring me another vessel and he said and, and he said to her there is no another vessel so they all ceased ay ay and then proceed then she came and told the man of god and he said go sell the oil and pay your debt and you and your sons live on them bwana asifiwe sana you see that is how to that is the, one of the way of telling and and and, uh, and and addressing addressing the mountain and the way to address the mountains that are before us is by believing the words of the prophet so that we can prosper If you read Acts of the Apostles Acts of the Apostles chapter number 27 verses 21 27 verses 21 It says but after wrong abstinence from food from from after a wrong fasting from food then Paul stood in the midst of them and said men you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss because they had gone through stuff at this time this time is when Paul what as we say now This you see we are in chapter 27 of Acts of the Apostles almost at the end almost at the end of the Acts of the Apostles so at this time Paul was to go before Caesar all right and the Lord Jehovah wanted him our God wanted Paul to preach to the whole world because there was no other there was no other person who was at that time who was ruling and reigning and who was now to receive the gospel so so that he can order everybody to so in other word Caesar could not have in other word he could not have received the word except through this this means so when Paul was on his way to Jerusalem he was on his not Jerusalem Rome he was on his way to Rome And so he, he was with other people and they were in the sea and there is this problem there was this mountain that came in the sea so it was too, so tempestuous it was so disastrous and they were almost dying in the sea but when you got to verses 21 22 and now i urge you to take heart you hear that In other words Paul is encouraging the brothers the people the sailors the people that were the people that were in the ship at that time because they had already if you continue reading you discover they had thrown away everything so that they can reduce the weight of the ship because they were fearing they were thinking it is because of the way the way the ship is that it is so heavy so they rooted they they offloaded everything wali tupa wali kwana tupa kila kitu wakifikiria ya kwamba hiyo ndio solution hmm? there was that mountain in all of them and they thought that they would die if you go home you just go read that that chapter and when you continue in verses in verses 20 23 for there stood by me this night and then Paul had to tell them had to encourage them there in verse 23 22 he's telling them you should not fear let them not fear if you read verses 23 is telling 22 22 get back to 22 and now i ask you to take heart 
For there will be no horse of life among you, but only of the sheep. So they were afraid. They were so much afraid, but Paul told them, do not be afraid. Hallelujah. And you remember our theme, the theme of this year. The Lord is saying, I will make you. Hallelujah. And there before in verses 14, verses 14 is, is, is talking about, do not fear. Do not fear. The Lord is telling us, do not fear. And there is a, just like, like the way our sister was telling us, if you, if you hear the word, do not fear. Hallelujah. It means there is something that is causing fear. Something that is causing you to fear. Something that is causing you. And this is what was happening. But Paul encouraged them. And they believed the word of the prophet Paul. Go read up to around verses 26. And you see, and you see what happened. And the angel Paul was encouraged, he encouraged them and he said, the Lord, the Lord himself talked to me this night when I fasted and when I prayed, he talked to me and he assured me. You see, the assurance, the one that we are talking about this year, the assurance is that none of you will get lost. None of you will die. None of you will, will not make profit. None of you will lose his life. But the sheep let me say this. I will say, believe in the word of the prophet. Believe in the prophet and his word. And you shall be able to thresh.